Isaiah chapter 24. Jeremiah is the 24th book of the Bible. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth the board inhabitants thereof. Well, there's inhabitants. Now, is this before Genesis 1-2? Uh, we'll read on. And shall be as with the people, so with the priests. Now, there's 12 classes here. Priests are higher than the people. As with the servant, so with the master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. It's going to happen to all, low and high. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. The armies are going to come in. They're going to take it all. For the Lord has spoken this word and is talking about Palestine. When Nebuchadnezzar comes in to, to Babylon the third time, he takes in the list that I believe is Jeremiah that gives or Second Chronicles. There's only one thing that's mentioned that's not in the list, and that's the Ark of the Covenant. And you don't see the Ark of the Covenant until Revelation when you see it in glory. The buildings were destroyed, burned to the ground, the, the, the walls were taken down. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do language. Now Peter says that the earth is going to go in a fervent heat with a loud noise. And there will be no inhabitants. It will be gone. The heavens and earth flee at the presence of God. And then you got Revelation 20. You have the great white throne judgment. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. There's no pollution. There's sin. Without sin, there would be no pollution. Pollution is a mark of a cursed world. Because they have transgressed the law. Romans 1 speaks about, speak about natural laws that man is transgressing today. They are allowing men and men and women and women to marry. That's, that's against nature. Paul speaks about, does not nature itself, and I'm, I'm not quoting the verse, doing it verbatim, does not nature tell you that a man with long hair defies nature? <laughs> The law says that man's domain is far as the eagle. Well, he has gone further by the eagle has landed on the moon. And then we violate, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not adulterate, thou shalt not bear fault. I mean, we're in violation of all. Change the ordinance. Broken the everlasting covenant of nature. We got scientists who come up with, with plants and all that synthetically. It's not natural. And the way our bodies have been reacting to it shows it is not natural. Therefore has the curse, Malachi 4 6, devoured the earth. Why are there tornadoes? Why are there there riots? Why are there tsunamis? Why are there volcanoes? Why are there earthquakes? The curse of the earth is because of sin. Because the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore has the curse devoured the earth. It is not God, it is man in his, his sin. 
all those people that died. The wages of sin is death. Had not Adam sinned, we'd be all living in a perfect world today without hospitals, without ambulances, and without the need of police. We wouldn't need lawyers, we wouldn't need courts, we wouldn't need jails. But taking a bite, no, it's not taking a bite. God said, thou shalt not. Adam did. That's the trouble. You know what the trouble in your life? You know what the trouble in your family? You know what the trouble is in your church? When God said, thou shalt not, and you say, okay, I'll go ahead and do it anyway. That's the problem. And they that dwell therein are desolate, alone. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. That's kind of hard, because after, when Peter says the earth is going on that, the next time you say, see men is at the, at the great white throne judgment, when the earth is gone and heavens are gone, there are no men left. So this has got to be talking about Palestine. In Genesis 1, 1, Genesis 1, 2, there was no man left. When God created Adam on the sixth day, Genesis chapter 2, there had been no other men. So it comes to be when, when God created the cherubim that had the man's face, God already knew what man was going to look like before he long created him. So this is not the old earth and the old heavens disappearing because there's few men left. There were a few men left in Babylon. It says in, in the Bible. That Nebuchadnezzar left a few men to be vine dressers and tenders of the land. The new wine morning. So there are grapes. That's what the new wine is. It's grapes, freshly pressed. No one's picking on us. We're picking on us. The vine languishes. Because no one's attending to us. There's no production in the vineyards. Why? There's a few men left. There's not enough. God had a seven year Sabbath rest of the land that had been violated over and over and over and over. God would have given the fruit of six, in the sixth year for three years. And to give the land rest the seventh year. Eight, begin planting and, and uh, over. And then nine, uh, eating and uh, harvesting and eating. The mirth of the tabards cease. No music. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceases. No, no musical entertainment. No joy. They shall not drink wine with a song. No jukebox with the music. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink. Oh, that wouldn't that be great right now? Wouldn't it be great for a guy who goes out after his job when his family has been tortured by it? Wouldn't it be great when he sits down in that bar stool that that drink becomes bitter to him? And he spits it out, gets in his car, and, and takes the money with him and, and puts it to his family and doesn't put anybody in danger. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great for all the families in the world that are involved with liquor to, that one day it would be bitter to them? Blech. I'd be the first one to volunteer at my store to burn that crap. I could say piss. That's in the Bible. That's what that stuff smells like to me. That beer smells like piss. And the Bible speaks about drinking their own piss. It's just wickedness, the Bible. There is nothing good about the drink. And then we see the difference in verse 7, the new wine. There is a big difference between grape juice and the Satan's juice. Why do they call it the spirit shop? That's what they called it when I grew up. The package store. 
Why you gotta put it in a package? You gotta be ashamed what you're doing. The city of confusion. Babel? I don't know. Go back and read about Babel. It's broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Locked up. Boarded up. You know what you do with a house that's it's somewhere in a city and all that and it's no more? They board it up. But no trespassing. Do not enter. No one can get in. There's a crying for wine in the streets. Well, no one's working the vineyards. Not enough men. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The land. But we've been reading about the earth. In the city is left desolation. And the gate is smitten with destruction. Well, that's what happened in Jerusalem under Nebuchadnezzar. That's what happened in Jerusalem under Titus. That's what happens in life till the Lord comes. Destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land, among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree. And, and we, we've read this before about the shaking of an olive tree. And as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. Now this is what you saw with Ruth. She's gathering after the reapers. They're harvesting and they leave stuff behind. The law says don't gather it all. So somebody has come through and gathered the harvest. Now here's a redment being chosen, being picking. There are a few men left. And they're likened to the crops that are left behind when you read about with Ruth. Then shall, so Ruth Pictures the tribulation remnant of Israel being picked by the grandmother, the great 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 grandmother of David. And guess what? When Jesus Christ comes to pick up the remnant of the Jews, we're right behind him on horseback coming to sell Petra. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing with majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Wouldn't that be great one day that we'll hear the Jews cry out in victory to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah. We'll be there. It won't be just, Hosanna! Hosanna! And then, crucify him! Crucify him! We won't hear the crucify him. We'll hear the Hosanna. You know what's, you know what's remarkable? When Solomon was made king, the Bible spoke about the earth shook. When Jesus Christ's triumphal entry into the city, there was no shaking. The ground didn't shake. Read in the Bible where it says there was such joy that the ground shook. Well, you better believe the ground is going to shake when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And Joab with his little army there, I forget the name of David's son there. What's going on? What's the noise we hear? What's going on? We're sitting with the king. We're partying with the king. What's going on? And then the message comes. Solomon is king. Uh-oh, we in trouble. Solomon who builds the temple. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to the temple. Type of Christ. 
You know, Solomon's brother of served authority. Jesus Christ, Solomon were the real kings. I'm not saying Satan and Jesus are brothers now. I don't go into that religion. Types don't go all the way. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fire. Ezekiel 5 2. Even the name of the Lord God of, Ho of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the other parts of the earth have we heard songs. Even glory to the righteous. But I say, my leanness, my leanness, no food. Woe unto me, the treacherous dealers, Revelation 18, have dwelt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dwelt very treacherously, Revelation 18. It's repeated. It's repeated. Not just treachery. It's treachery. We're going back in the tribulation passage. We're going from the glory of the Lord. We're going back to the tribulation. Fear and the pit and the snare trap are upon the old inhabitants of the earth. So the tribulation period is for all. It's Jacob's trouble. But it's a time that the whole earth is going to under the Antichrist. Trouble. Hey, you got Satan ruined. Exactly what you wanted. Don't receive that mark and then let you watch your baby die in your arms. There will even be times the Bible records in Revelation you're going to want to die and won't be able to. I can always imagine somebody jumping off the uh, Empire State Building, laying flat in the streets of New York, get run over by a bus, and just laying there, get run over by a traffic student unable to die and then have one of those things bite him again it says three or I forget three or six months of torment and pain they're going to seek death and they're not going to be find it that's going to be worldwide and shall come to pass Amos 519 that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit from the noise of the fear what is his noise shall fall into the pit and he that cometh up out of the midst of oh, okay, I'm out of the pit, I'm okay, shall be taken in a snare. He gets out of the pit and he gets into a trap. For the windows from on high, and I don't mean Microsoft, the Bible says there are windows in heaven. From on high are open. You know when the windows on high open, when we read in the Bible, in Genesis, it, the, 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 all the rain came with Noah's flood. And the foundations of the earth do shake. They're going to be uh, earthquakes galore in the tribulation period. There's going to be one great uh, earthquake that's going to just level the earth. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. And the earth is moved exceedingly. The orbit. Something about the orbit of the earth. Now we get to Peter. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. And shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall. And not rise again. There's the destruction of Mother Earth. You know, I wondered if this likened to. I always wonder about that scapegoat. When they lay all those sins upon that scapegoat and they set it free, you ever wonder what happened in that thing? You're talking about all the sins of the people are laid upon this one animal. He's a curse. You know how much sin the world will be at the, when the Earth is finally gone and dead? When Peter says it, it, it's a fervent heat, it just goes up and there's a great noise. You imagine how much earth has taken upon man in his curse. You know how much blood has been shed since uh, Abel was killed by Cain? Both murder and by wars and by accidental. You know how many people have been violated on this planet by predators? 
by criminals. You know how many Jews have been killed to get rid of them? Satan's disgust and hate for them? You realize all the nuclear stuff that we have today, this great nuclear society, how much they're burying it in mountains just to get rid of it? You know how much poisons they have dumped into the rivers and to the oceans? And Right now out in the oceans, I guarantee you, out here in Florida and on the, on the, the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, listen, th there are toxic waste that have been dumped in barrels in the Gulf of Mexico. We had the big oil leak. That's because of the curse of man. This earth has taken a beating by man because of his sin. I believe if we were still under the Garden of Eden, sinlessness, righteous, tree of life instead of the tree of knowledge, we wouldn't need cars. We would be all healthy. We wouldn't need to be traveling, you know, spaceships to go in outer space. Jesus went in outer space and came back. The angels came back and forth. Imagine all the people of Sodom that were killed. Imagine all the sodomites in the world perverting themselves and perverting others and trying to get Christians now in trouble and to shut up. How many Christians have been killed, their blood spilt upon the ground in fires, in torture, because of the word? How much is this earth filled, filled I'm going to say with dung? Of the extractions of man and animal. I don't think we're going to need to go to the bathroom in glory. I don't know if Adam had to use the bathroom before he, before he fell. I don't know. But since I know one thing now, this side of the curse, we have to go potty and our potty defiles. the land and water. When, when you're in the Civil War if you're, if you're settling a homestead and you come to a, a river, you build your potty down river, not up river, because it'll make your coffee taste a little different. The earth is defiled with blood, with dung, with urine, with crime, with hate, chemicals. That's why God's got to get rid of it. And yet it says it doesn't go completely away. It just goes around. So if the earth is not, I can never say that word, completely dissolved, gone forever, nothing existent, like, the Jehovah Witnesses will teach that's what happens to your body. No, your the, the the law of the thermodynamics is it, it just changes matter. You can burn wood and it goes into smoke. It, it's not completely gone. Well, where does that smoke go? It's still there, just because you can't see it. The chemicals of that wood has been changed, and then it leaves behind ash. You can't get rid of the ash. And shall come to pass. Wait a minute. Uh, verse 20. And the trans transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. Like that scapegoat. It shall fall and not rise again. Isn't the great Mother Earth is not coming back? You can have Mother Earth, according to verse 20. Take her. See what she's going to be? You can have her as your God. I'll take the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that created it all. And shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones. Okay, see what my note is here. And I've got just a long list of verses here. I mean, kings, rulers. 
principalities in high places that are on high. The kings of the earth upon the earth. Oh, a lot of kings are punished. Some are saved. Some do right. Listen, there were kings in the line of Judah that did right. And there were kings that didn't do right. You know, there wasn't one king in Israel that did right. Some are right. Some are wrong. Go read uh, Luke and Matthew chapter 4 about kingdoms. And they, the kings, the high ones, shall be gathered together. As prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. So you know what happens to all transgressors during the millennium? They're locked up. They're shut up. And after many days shall they be visited. Great white throne judgment. Then the moon shall be confounded. Psalm 67, 4. 72 8 and the son ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion who's gonna reign it who's gonna sit in Mount Zion the Lord Jesus Christ right David's throne right Luke 1 well look at that capital L capital O capital R capital D there is Jesus Christ as Lord God Jehovah. Look at that. You can't miss that one. God does not. Now God himself. The spirit. God does not come in, into Mount Zion and reign. His son does. And in Jerusalem, and before his ancients, the people, gloriously. Ooh, can you imagine when Jesus Christ is back in Jerusalem in his glory? Who do you think is going to step up to him and say, Crucify! <laughs> Yo, I don't think so. I bet you they'd be singing Hosanna all the time. I bet you they'd be singing praises. I mean, if, I mean, you may have to change some of the hymns for the Jews. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Here I bring my offering. I mean, because it's salvation by works and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll be praising him. They may have a hymnal. They'll be worshiping the one that they said, crucify him. And all the ancients, the word, you know, the Jews and all that. They will stand before God in, in Revelation 20 at the great white throne judgment. The ones that said crucify him. There's a whole bunch of them. The raiment, very, very little left yet to be made more. Hey, what's wrong with you guys? We worship the Messiah. You 